So we wanted to have a vaudeville show, and we called it New Wave of Dance. Why New Wave? Now that word was involved with music, and just come up with music. Well, or? it also came from you know French cinema. You know, actually Christian Hoffman suggested the title. He said, you know, this is there's a whole new wave, and we're going to start calling it New Wave. Do you think he, he invented the term on that spot? And I, wouldn't, later I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if he did. Had you heard the new expression used before? Except in French cinema? No, never. Okay. So then we had this vaudeville show, and we didn't want it to be punk vaudeville, although there were sort of punk acts in it, popular then, emotional cripples. I mean, we thought of any stupid thing, and we put it on this flyer, and we only got like a lot of weird responses from people. Mm -hmm. Nazis, emotional cripples, and you remember We had a whole list. list. And the class only showed up for the auditions? Was that how you, did somebody how know? We, we knew Klaus from, oh, at this point, Max's Kansas City was another place where, um, upstairs, they were mm -hmm. having shows. Okay. Mm -hmm. Klaus, it's kind of Anya Phillips, like, held Court. She was like the queen, I suppose, of Max's Kansas City. Mm -hmm. um, Klaus, at that point, he spoke very little English, um, and he was a pastry chef. Uh, that was how he made his living. And he used to hang around, and he was the most incredible, odd-looking person, and nobody really knew him, but everybody wanted to, but, you know, there, there was... He had makeup at that time, or...? Yes. Black and points and uh, the whole thing. Or it was a, a little toned down, but yeah, he pretty much looked the way he looked. Mm -hmm. um, not black lipstick, but he just was a strange looking person. Mm -hmm. um, we approached him and said, you know, what do you do? And, and he told us his history that he was a, an opera singer. He trained for that in Germany. Mm -hmm. And um, he wanted to do something. Mm -hmm. And um, he was very much influenced by sci-fi. You know, he was an alien from outer space. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. Donna Destry was the um, the B girl hostess, which was a girl who came out with cards, put them on an easel to announce the next act, and gave us a chance to change the scenery mm -hmm. and do all of that in the meantime. Then you had uh, David McDermott was the MC. Mm -hmm. How did how did you meet up with David? Through Christian Hoffman. We met David. You know, he's a story in himself. Right, I have to go talk to him. So he was our MC, and uh, you know it was fun. The whole thing was pretty voluntary. And uh, David McDermott became something of a diva. Did he, he demanded his own dressing room? He room. wanted his name in lights. And, see. I had had some, it was pretty much whatever money Tom and I had saved to finance it, and I inherited some money when my father died, you know, mm -hmm. and that's all the money that, that we had in the world that went into it, and we didn't have money to pay people, mm -hmm. so when he wanted those things, we couldn't provide them, so he left us, and then we made Christian Hoffman the MC, because we were in the lurch, you know, mm -hmm. we had a few more shows scheduled, and then Christian rewrote a lot of songs. We made it a Christmas type thing. And what we said that we would do, Tom and I, was we wanted to have a film society and show schlock movies. Mm -hmm. We wanted to show monster movies. Mm -hmm. So we booked every Tuesday of the month and sent out our, and we guaranteed them we'd do it for as long as we could, for at least a year. Mm -hmm. you know? And we'd pay him rent, and we'd show movies there, and we'd try to get our friends and people to come to see them. Mm -hmm. And then, after a couple of months, Anne developed her own calendar. Mm -hmm. We had our calendar, and we had people join privately this mm -hmm. thing and brought them there. And then Anne wanted to have more of a regular calendar, mm -hmm. you know, because then she could be more tender and make more money. And, mm -hmm. You know, it took a while to mm -hmm. evolve. So. Um. I'd say TV was a great influence, too. It used to be embarrassing. For instance, in film school, you couldn't seriously say, 
I love Green Acres because isn't it funny? You know? mm -hmm. I'd say a lot of people found us. I mean, like Keith Haring, Kenny Sharp, John Sex, people that were living in the area. The reason people lived in this area is because it was like the cheapest place to live. I used to be like the door person that used to take the money. A lot of people hated me. I was like a bitch because I made them pay a dollar to get in, mm -hmm. you know. Um, John, I got him mixed up. Then he had, a, you know, his normal last name. Mm -hmm. John, John Yeah. Uh, he had joined the Monster Movie Club. He was very shy, mm -hmm. very shy. I mean, he was so shy that you wouldn't notice him or know, know him. Mm -hmm. Just like sort of creep in, very polite, very soft-spoken. I'd confused him. Stanley had warned me about this Polish kid that was bad news that would come in and go crazy. He was mm -hmm. mental. Mm -hmm. um, he said, don't let this guy in. Mm -hmm. He looked sort of like John. Even though I'd already taken John's $5, he had a membership card. He was a member of the Monster Movie Club. I always thought that it was the other Polish guy. Mm -hmm. And John wasn't a vocal person. So I'd like say, you can't come in here, and like always trying to keep him out, because mm -hmm. I was convinced that he was this. Finally, <coughs> he showed me his car, and then we you know, got to know him. And mm -hmm. John was very, always extremely polite, mild-mannered, well-behaved, you know. Mm -hmm. I'd say he blossomed at Club 57 mm -hmm. with his he was always a great artist. He was made wonderful posters. Even before he was performing, he was a wonderful graphic artist. His silk screens, I don't know if seen them, yes. they're really, they're really good. So, um, and I'd, who, the only reason I think he started performing, and a lot of people started performing, was because there were these nights to film. There was some party night or something. There was no entertainment and everybody became their own entertainers or with pretty much the exception of me, you know, like I, I have terrible stage fright. I could never get up in front of people. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how they started performing. They were terrible and then they got better mm -hmm. and, you know, it didn't matter because your friends were supporting you. Mm -hmm. What about um, Keith Haring? Um, Your first impression of him? Same kind of. I mean, he still is. He's not as flamboyant or um, outspoken as John has become. Mm -hmm. He's still very polite, I'd say very shy, um, very kind, sensitive person. Mm -hmm. He was never one to get up and do a go-go dance. He was more into visual arts than performing mm -hmm. arts. Mm -hmm. Kenny Sharp? Now Kenny, that's another story. Kenny's always been uh, flamboyant and outspoken. He's the one that used to scream at me, you bitch, because he used to try to he'd think of ways to sneak by me so he wouldn't mm -hmm. have to pay his dollar. Mm -hmm. uh, he was totally gone on TV and uh, pop culture. Any, the wilder the better. Mm -hmm. And a good friend of his, uh, Drew Straub, mm -hmm. uh, was my favorite personal member of the Monster Movie Club because he'd come in and yell and scream at the movies. And, mm -hmm. uh, great heckler. Great heckler. Great heckler. I mean, he'd just be entertainment in himself. Mm -hmm. He was more entertaining than half the events.